In the slurm file that I gave you, make sure to change the eighth line from the top to the eighth line so that it has your email address in it. So on that line, there's sbatch, and it talks about mail. It's going to send an email, and it has an equal sign. And then right here, you want to put in your email address. So go ahead and change that. Uh, this way, you will receive any notification emails when your code begins, ends, or fails, since the line before this line says sbatch mail type fail begin end. You'll notice in the second line of the file that I gave you, so this is in the second line now, that you have just 10 minutes for your code to run. This should be enough time for what we're doing. If you were to run a code that would take longer than 10 minutes, the job scheduler would kill your, jobs, your job after 10 minutes. So the amount of time that you have on the second line should be longer than what you expect your code to take. Also in the third and the fourth lines, so third and fourth, uh, we're asking for just one uh, node and one processor of that node. And this is because we haven't parallelized the code yet. Later, when we parallelize the code, we'll be asking for two processors. Now you should be ready to submit your job to the supercomputer. To submit your job, type s batch and then the name of your submission file. So, for example, submit Kings Peak Slurm or whatever you're using. Now you can check the status of your code as you hopefully saw in one of the CHPC videos. You can type S Q U and then your unit here. And that will show this you the status of your job. And if for any reason you need to cancel your job because you made a mistake, you can use S cancel and use the job ID number. After your code completes, you will be able to find the output both in the scratch directory where the code ran as well as in the working directory. So scratch is where the code ran. So the code ran here and in your working directory. So this is the directory where you submitted the slurm file. You can find the output in the scratch directory because that's where the code ran and that's where the output was generated. Then you can find the output also in the working directory because at the end of the slurm submission file, if you look at what's there, we have copy dash r and we say copy from the scratch directory any files star that end with dot dat. So the star just means any other any any text here. And then if it ends the file name ends with dot dat, we're gonna copy that over here to the working directory. So that's why you're going to find your output also in the working directory, which will be more convenient to access it and get it to your home computer. So if your code did not run correctly at this point, maybe there were some errors, and the dot dat output files were not generated by your code yet, because it didn't get that far, you can check the files for your job that end with dot err, stands for error, or dot out, the output and see if there are any errors or information in any of these files that might give you a clue as to what's going on.